Well, thanks everyone for coming to another ACF Chat Fridays. We are the ACF team and we're doing this every two weeks, um, although not for very much longer um, for the end of the year because we've kind of got holidays and other uh, sort of Christmas in the, in the way. Um, but yeah, we, I'm Ian Paulson, the product manager. We've got Liam, Matt, Anthony from the engineering team. We've got Mike from the content team, Brian from the engineering team as well. Um, and yeah, we what are we doing today? We are just going back to the open Q&A. Um, we've got the Q&A feature in Zoom that's running. So you're very welcome to type in a message either there or in chat. Um, you can also you know, unmute, raise your hand or, or whatever and, and ask your question and the team can see if we can help. Um, and obviously we're, yeah, we are doing these sessions. We're recording them. Um, we put them on our, our WP Engine YouTube builders account. Uh, on YouTube, and um, we do a post on the Advanced Custom Fields blog, which is available on the ACF Chat Fridays page, which we can link to as well. Um, so yeah, this is this is just us, the team, wanting to chat to you, hear about any issues you've got with ACF, any feature requests, any anything that's um, on your mind about ACF, what you're building at the moment. Just come and you know come and talk to us openly about what you're building with ACF and and how you're finding it. So yeah, we can. I think we we have got a couple of questions that came in ahead of time, so we can always start with those. If anyone, unless anyone has anything burning they want to ask. Right, what what have we got, Liam? Do you want to see what we've got in the in the hopper, as it were? Yeah, sure. We did get one question ahead of time, so we can start with that. If we don't get. Uh... Yeah, I think yeah. Let's start yeah, with those. Yeah, we've we got two start. from from Fabian. I know you're here as well, so we we can we can get started answering those. So Fabian's first question was: I've created a custom publication type uh, called products. Um, I've created custom fields that I use to customize my product page, and it works very well. I've also created a relationship custom field which should retrieve similar products that will be displayed at the bottom of my product page. But I can't use this field in my similar products block. I can only retrieve products in the same category as the main product on the page. How can I use my relationship custom field? I guess that question raises a question is how are, what, what are you using to create the, or what is the similar products block? Are you using Elementor? Is that, uh, or another page builder or something else um, for that. Fabian, feel free to unmute and we can chat yeah. about it. I don't know if you mentioned it, I might have missed it, but uh, Fabian uses Elementor and ACF exclusively, so there's no custom code here, which is uh, why there's a question of uh, where, where, the, where the specific block lies, you know, is that a default Elementor block or uh, something you've created from... What Elemental lets you do. I think probably regardless of your answer, it's uh it's gonna be an elemental specific question that is it's best off asking those guys. We we had a, a quick chat in the team. Obviously, none of us are pros when it comes to elemental, but we think that if that if it's blocking you to only the current category, that's gotta be a an elemental behavior somewhere because it's not uh not something that you know acf does natively or anything like that so it's, it's probably a question uh, for them yeah i wonder i mean i've posted a link now i'm not sure if that actually fully helps but it might be something that elemental they might have components that allow you to to change where the selection is coming from and if you, they can plug that into an acf field um yeah that, but yeah, I I would say that that is a uh, elemental question because I I think we we say it quite a bit, but obviously ACF is very much positioned around defining what data your site needs, filling out that data, or allowing your content editors to fill that data out, and then from the perspective of how do you take that data and display it on the front end is very much up to you. It's very much up to um, your theme, your page builder or how you use the block editor or whatever. It's not necessarily an ACF uh, specific thing or a thing that we uh, are opinionated about. So yeah, I, I know Elemental does have custom custom sort of 
widgets, I guess, for ACF fields. Um, but whether or not they, they've they've got that um, support for the relationship field. So yeah, and anything sort of front end related is is more to do with how your tool, which isn't not ACF, but the, the tool for displaying the data, it does it. And I think yeah, that question is best best posed to Elementor. Uh, and Fabian did have a second one. What was that, Liam? Where's that gone? Uh, yeah, I can take that one. Uh, well, I'll pass it over to Ant because I got Ant to look at that before for the start. Yeah, of this. yeah, yeah. Uh, so this one was about around uh, product category. So by like by default, you get the uh, the post type name dash category slash and then the category to get the archive of that of that category. Um, and and it seems like the the desire is to have that category be the root like or be uh, next to the root of the the domain so take out that middle part of it of the URL um I wasn't able to find a, a good way to do that out out of the box um, because I think that 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 sort of breaks some of the conventions that that WordPress core by default does for like taxonomies and post types um but there there is a, a one way that you could work around it assuming that you don't have thousands of these categories that you need to make um, you could make a single page dedicated to being the root of that that category. You would name it very maybe the same or similar. Um, so then that page, you would write a loop that would go through your archive for that category. So it, it, it's a bit of a hack and it, it doesn't scale past, you know, doing maybe dozens of them, but uh, but it, it could accomplish the goal. Um, but yeah, not 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 out of the box. I don't think you can do that without breaking things. Um, yeah, so maybe there's it, a plugin out there. I don't know. I, and again, it's kind of outside of ACF's wheelhouse because even though we register, we allow you to register custom post types and we kind of define some basic structures for URLs and archive URLs, anything custom is definitely not ACF territory and it's probably plugin territory. I mean, I was looking at this one earlier. Yeah, that might, that might in, help. Um, and I saw another one, there was like a permalink, uh, post type permalink plugin. I think you could even search post type permalink. And they have more granular options for for post types, uh, but I just don't. I, I'm not confident though that that one yet has a like category specific because it's it's mainly for if you wanted to have different rewrite rules for each post type. So there are a few options out there. Um, yeah, yeah. Redirection. Just, just that's a good one. Some background there. If you think about how WordPress internally works, right? It's getting a URL, and that's the first thing it sees. So it then has to work through all of the possible rewrite rules that it has saved. Um, so that's posts, pages, categories, and things like that. And so it kind of works through sequentially those. And if you registered something that was on just forward slash, then you would break the ability to have posts and pages. So you have to have something kind of smarter that's sitting in between, which is why these plugins do that. Uh, something that figures out what the request currently is and then passes it to either posts or pages or categories or whatever else you've configured. So yeah, that's why it's a, a technically complicated thing. It's just the the way the rewrite rules work inside WordPress. And that's where like having just a dedicated page for each one is probably the safest thing to do because you're not you're not getting in the rid of, getting in the way of like core uh, functions. You're just kind of defining a page and saying loop through all the categories, uh, all the items for that category. Uh, cool. Uh, we've got some questions in the Q and A now, so we can uh, move on to those. I'll start with with John, who uh, who asks, "I'm increasingly having clients who want the ability to manage and build temp templates themselves. I love how ACF, I assume, it's a typo there, and Elementor make it easy for them to do that, but it only works on some ACF features. Are there any things in the works to make this kind of integration uh, more for WordPress builders and base WordPress?" Uh, the problem with this this kind of question is that we can't build anything specific to a page builder. We kind of have to rely on them to build the ACF integrations. We try and make it as, as easy as possible for that. And you know, ACF is, it's as if you develop with it, you'll know it has uh, hooks and filters everywhere to make that easy. But when it comes to the specific page builders, the moment we shipped any code that was dependent on a specific page builder, then obviously we'd be we'd be chasing our tail basically on every single release they do, every WordPress release. It's just not viable really for ACF to do any code there. So kind of the you you the question there is better suited to Elemental or whichever other page builder you want to use on the kind of features you want. We have a we have a pretty good relationship with with a lot of them. So if there's ever anything that they want to do that they can't do, then you know they can reach out to us and 
we can see about deploying the things that we need to do to enable it for them. But yeah, it's definitely a, a question for them rather than us. Does that help, John? Yeah. Um, okay, Diego has asked, is there any news on ACF blocks field validation and using ACF blocks with WordPress React components? And those are two features that we've been working on. Uh, they are uh, going into hopefully the next major release of ACF, which is ACF 6.3. Um, the first part of that is, I'm going to say that. Uh, yes, okay. I, yeah, I mean, maybe I'm misinterpreting that using ACF blocks with WordPress React components because we've talked about using, if you're using a headless type setup and you've, you're building front end components to display the data, we've talked about using those components in the editor uh, as the preview rather than having to rebuild your component as a PHP file. And if that's what Diego's referring to, then that's potentially going in 6.3. I'm raising my eyebrows at you, Liam. Is that correct? We are yeah, doing yeah. that still. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so cool. It, yeah, if you've got a headless component, we'll render that. But specifically WordPress React components, that's a kind of bigger picture thing. Yes. Yeah. And that is not happening in 6.3, but it's something that, you know, we're keeping, we're, we're working through and thinking about. Um, yeah. So a ACF, this is going to be ACF and ACF Pro 6.3, but obviously the ACF blocks functionality is in ACF Pro. That's going to be coming. Uh, yeah. It's, we're, we're rapidly approaching holiday season, end of the year. Um, we are not going to be doing a major release just before Christmas and people go away on lots of holidays. So it's going to be Q1. Um, now we've been, yeah, we've got a lot on our plate at the moment and those things are quite big. So they're not, th that release is pretty chunky. So sorry, it's probably not the best news, Diego, but yeah, it's, it's not coming this year. The, it is uh, top of mind <laughs> and it well, is top uh, of mind for it, you too. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's in progress as well. The field validation stuff that we've, we've got the UX for. Is, is looking really neat. I'm looking looking forward to shipping that. It'll be, it's been a pain point for me back when I was in agency life. So fully understand how important it is to get block validation working. Uh, yeah, so yeah, moving on. Sorry, Diego. Um, Kevin's asked, hi, we use ACS flexible content field as our page builder and no other builders, which is a common use case for a lot of people who have used it for a long time. Um, and we've got a lot of templates to choose from. Uh, I presume templates, you mean layouts there when you're editing. Um, is there anything coming in the future to help speed up and or optimize flexible content? Um, yes, we do want to improve the flexible content field next year. We want we would like to add the ability to preview the layouts before selecting them. Things that make it easier to um, for your content editors. Um, so yeah, we we are aware that the flexible content field is is kind of heavily used by a portion of our user base. It's one of our pro features um, or pro field types, and yeah, it it needs a bit of love. It does need some some love from a usability point of view when when you're the content editor and you're filling in the data. So yeah, we we hope to bring you some 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 of that in 2024. Also, in the... oh sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say also. That the improvements we want to make there, a lot of them are obviously around the admin experience. And when you're adding, you know, editing flexible content, when you've got lots of things there and lots of layouts, uh, Dale, our designer, who's not here today, has been been sort of pitching some stuff to us to improve that generally for all fields to try and kind of, I know basically when you load an ACF field group, it loads the entire DOM right now. And we'd like to get rid of that and make it only load things on demand. Uh, it should, that would be the biggest improvement we can make to ACF admin performance, I think. So. Hopefully that that can happen next year. And and I was just going to ask uh, if if you can leave a comment in the chat or or even unmute yourself and say, but uh, I'd be curious, like what what are the the parts that are slowing you down? Because uh, like, is it that you're like clicking to add the layout and you've got too many layouts to choose from, and it's just like you're just seeing words and you don't know what they're associated with, or is it that like you want that pop up to not be part of the button? Or I, I'm I'm just curious if like there's some friction in creating the content right now. Yeah, excuse me. I think the I, there's just so many different builder elements that we have um, that allow different layouts, uh, layouts inside of boxes, boxes next to boxes. And it's just the, what Liam said with the DOM, it just loads the entire thing. So the actual HTML that loads is probably like eight to 10 megabytes. 
because there's just so many options. So if it only loaded what was requested or being added, that would obviously speed things up quite a bit because there's not so much stuff for the entire page to, to download. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and Kevin, that is, that is when you're editing, when you are in like the ACF field group, that you're editing that and you're, you're changing, you know, the layouts, what, what's, what fields are in which layout or adding new layouts r rather no, than. It's, ac it's actually the opposite. Like I have no issues. Like I understand that, you know, when I'm building the site for my client to be able to do, it, it's okay that the building of the actual layouts um, that is actually pretty fast. It's when they go to add a new page and they're looking to build it out, add a text block, add a quote, add a collage, add a media gallery. Like we've, there's just so many things that that's the part that, you know, we get you know, some 502 errors and things like that from trying to submit the amount of information that we have. Right, okay. It just takes a while to load that page and have all the, you know, WYSIWYG editors all that kind yeah. of stuff. It just takes a minute. Yeah, that is definitely a performance issue that we kind of are aware of. I mean, it, it happens with not just a flexible content field type, but if you have, you know, a post that when you edit the post and you've got 200 fields on that post to define data about that post, you're loading 200 field inputs in the DOM, you're loading, getting all those values from the database and you're writing them back to the database when you hit update post. So from a performance wise, yeah, it's flexible content is probably where the, the issue is much it, like the, the light is shone on it more because people have lots of layouts and lots of fields within the layouts. And then obviously the client can just be like, well, I want that layout and now I want a hundred of them. And then it just can go crazy. Um, so yeah, we do need to look into that. And I think, um, yeah, it's, I think it's a tricky one though. I think because it'll see it's kind of, it's using WordPress. Um, and adding fields to the WordPress edit screen. And I think, yeah, we we need to do some work on the performance optimization. But so, yeah, Julie noted, Kevin, I appreciate you calling that out as well. Let me go and uh, log some stuff. Nice. Brian, I will grab your question next, which is uh, having some issues with ACF blocks, not outputting things like line height and appearance on the front end, although it appears to work in the back end, I registered support in my blog.json file, but does this need to have its own class variable in my render.php file, which is the, the block template? Uh, this is this is a good question. Um, there, Basically the way WordPress works uh, in the block editor is whenever you click any of those supports that you've registered, the fact that you've registered the support in your blog.json means it's available in the first place. So you, that bit is, is working correctly. Uh, but WordPress will dynamically apply that to the wrapper that outputs. So you see things live, which is why in, in a lot of our block examples, um, I know Damien from, from DevRel is, is doing a, a demo on, on making a slider block, I think next week. I'll, I'll get someone to put the link in chat for that. Um, but that, that kind of thing you have to do the switch on is preview, right? Um, which you probably are already doing. Uh, and that will output, will we'll basically load all the values that you've set in your supports and output them only for the front end. And we let WordPress take care of it for the back end. Uh, specifically, there are some things in, in that list of, uh, sorry, going back a li little bit. The way to do this is there's a uh, get block wrapper attributes function. And that reads all the block supports that need to be passed from uh, from the blocks comment and turns them into whether that's style, script, CSS, whatever it needs to do in your DOM uh, wrapper element on output. So if you're using that function, that should take care of almost everything. There are a couple of things in supports that aren't handled for you in that function yet. And I personally, I'd argue that that's a bug in WordPress and it should be raised to them. I can't think off the top of my head uh, someone had this conversation with someone recently. It's only a couple of the newer ones that are really specific. So it shouldn't be things like line height and appearance that that should work. So I think the answer to that is to, to make sure you're using get block wrapper attributes, the function, the link in chat to its documentation. Um, and that should 
if you put that in the kind of wrapper element in your block template when uh not is preview that should take care of it for you okay sounds good thank you liam no worries and just drop us a, a tweet or anything if uh you're having trouble with it and we can actually dig into your specific block i like how this came up today after yesterday <laughs> talking about it right isn't that great yeah And as far as for those experimental ones you were talking about, any uh, tips and tricks to get those to output on the front end? So you'll have access to the values that are stored in the block comment uh, in the data uh, variable. So you just have to, if there's anything that doesn't get output, uh, you just have to manually read that data attribute and figure out what you need to, you know, whether it's a style that you've got or whether you just want to do it as an inline style. Uh, but yeah. All, everything is available to you in the in the data variable. Uh, you just have to manually output what needs to happen to make it render how you want it to. All right, gotcha, thanks. No worries. No open questions. What a lovely flurry of Q&A. Any more for any more? Just quickly say as well, Kevin, I, I've added your your sort of your vote, as it were, to our internal tracker for the performance improvements to the flexible content field. Um, but also it's a good chance to say that we do have, if you haven't heard me say it already in previous sessions, this is our public feedback board that I've just linked in the chat. So if you have things that are top of mind that are improvements or feature requests or things that just really annoy you about ACF. Um, chances are maybe somebody else has already put it on this feedback board and you can upvote it. And obviously we listen to that kind of um, amount of people saying things about the similar issues, or you can add your own post and, and request a, fit, uh, a feature request. And we have got another Q&A question from John, uh, who I am jumping into ACF and modern WordPress development. And our team is used, used to the pattern of creating custom blocks, register them, and build pages by adding the required blocks. I don't understand what is the configuration difference between the block.json and the options that can be set when registering the component in functions.php. Currently, my block registration just does a glob search of all the blocks on the blocks folder so that I don't have to register every component individually. Is there a better, a better pattern for going about this? It's a wrapper, isn't it, Liam? And the the registering from the block.json. So you can actually define all of the pieces inside of that function the same. Uh, you can technically, but we wouldn't recommend that purely because if you have block.json, there's a whole bunch of extra stuff that gets passed. Things like uh, WP defined assets, which is how you load scripts and styles. That's really difficult to do if you do it in the PHP way, which is why we don't really talk about just the mm -hmm. PHP way anymore. Uh, when you say registering the component in functions.php, do you mean are you using uh, register block type or ACF register block type there? Register okay. block type. Yeah, cool. So if you if you're calling register block type, that essentially does the same thing, but it's harder with things like enqueued styles and scripts that are relative paths to the blog.json, it expects them to be done uh, in blog.json so that it can compile them for you. Most of the stuff works the same though, so you're probably okay if you've got it working already. Uh, as for, is there a, a better way than just glob searching on the blocks folder? I don't think so. Um, that's the way I would do it. There's a, obviously, depending on your tooling, I, I assume that you've got that set up to handle um, compiling all of your, your block assets and CSS and things like that that are specific to blocks. We have a, a blog post coming soon, I think, on uh, on how to do that in a, in a kind of sensible workflow. I will make sure we tweet that out. So if you follow us on the, well, not tweet, what's it, post on X, 
I gotta get, gotta get used to that now. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll message that out once uh, once we've got that. Uh, but yeah, got a glob on the blocks folder is definitely the easiest way, I think. And and with that function, like the the one times that I do actually define things that are in the block.json is when you have strings that need to be translated because you can't really translate from the block.json. So you can define them just the same as you were using your register block type uh, previously, but with the block.json as the reference, and then anything that you put in there basically overrides the block.json. Yeah, and there's filters as well. So if you want to have block.json and then use the filter to, to modify it, basically how ICF works, right? We 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 let you throw in the you use the WordPress uh register block type function with a block.json file and we detect that and hook on add if you've got the ACF key and initialize it as an ACF block. But that generally the way you've got it set up is seems like a seems like a sensible way and it's it's the way I'm seeing a lot of agencies going towards now. Uh, and and general builders, you know, they they get a library of blocks that they want to use and they can just drop them in to their project for each one. Yeah, thanks for the question. Cool. Yeah, John says in chat that he uses a tailwind and yeah, a complete single file for all of his blocks, which is fine. Yeah, you can do that. No WordPress are trying to move you away from that because they want everything to be isolated. But yeah, there's many ways to WordPress and that's certainly valid. It's not an ACF chat Fridays without <laughs> one of us saying there's many ways to WordPress. So ACF is secret here for it <laughs> Are we looking? We got any other questions? Anyone have any issues with the the six point WordPress six point four update this week? Any anyone running very old versions of curl and have to panic update or downgrade? Or using the oxygen page builder and having fatals with ACF as well? Yeah, yeah, that's true. We got a lot of support requests for that. Uh, if you were affected, then yeah, oxygen patch that and you can update it now. Just just on the off chance. I think it only affected 2021. So it's a even li very much limited subset of oxygen users, but well, as far as, as me and the rest of the team have gone this last couple of weeks, we've uh, been working on our next release. We've got 623 that should come out. Either well, certainly by the next ACF Chat Fridays because the next one's cancelled for Thanksgiving. So definitely by the next one, we've got some some nice little bug fixes coming along the line there. Some improvements to flexible content layout layout names as well, which uh, going back to one of the earlier questions should help showing you the the name and things like that in the the header bar before you expand it just to make it easier. And adding copying the name support, which I know is a a big deal. But when you're uh, scrolling through and need to output it in the front end. And also, um, and when you duplicate one, it'll append the word copy to it. So now uh, you won't mix them up. So if you do have something that's very, like you have logic that's on that ID, you won't, you know, be confused and changing which one. So that should help a ton. Yeah, that was one of the ones where I saw Ian had the issue on our backlog and I'm like, wait, Surely we already do that because we've done it for field groups for basically yeah. forever. So yeah. I was surprised that that wasn't there. And there's a bunch of other things. I just literally can't remember any of them right now. And anyone, anything yeah, I'm you want to? Just wanna... looking through. Right we've got, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we we've got a bug on the gallery field on mobile that's been hanging around for ages. That'll probably be in the not the next bug uh, point release, but it'll be the one after that. So we're trying to we're trying to tackle some long running issues we 622 which came out a couple of weeks ago now had had a couple of uh, yeah really annoying little bugs that have just been around for a while like the color picker if you'd ever used that and you were typing in the hexadecimal value for your color and after three three sort of letters or numbers it, it just starts to autocomplete what a real usability nightmare 
Um, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. And there was, there was a long running bug with relationship fields as well. If you were using mobile, you couldn't remove the items that you'd been, that had been selected. Um, so yeah, we, that, that was a, a good couple of fixes in that release. We're also, we're also fixing a long running bug in the next, the next release that, uh, has bugged if you've been affected by it you'll know how annoying it is uh it's where if you like uh, migrate acf to another site or you uh have the anything to do with the site url changing the activation code wasn't smart enough to realize that the the, the like, activation essentially was no longer valid and so uh you would try and update and you get an error and it was wasn't a descriptive error it wasn't useful and you basically have to go and deactivate and reactivate but we're we're, we're fixing that now and we're taking care of that for you so Hopefully, ACF will uh, be much more reliable when it comes to updating. Yeah, that's for ACF Pro. It's yeah these little little bugs with uh, the license. Um, that's been also... a, a pet passion project of mine for the last two years, trying to make incremental fixes to to solving those issues. Yeah, it's nice to reduce the support when updates come out and people have to have to sort of contact us to try and get the update because something's not not quite right. Um, we're also sort of tracking and trying to work out the best way to deal with the change in WooCommerce recently. I don't know if anyone's using WooCommerce with ACF and using uh, using ACF to put custom fields against WooCommerce orders because WooCommerce has changed um, recently their, the way they store their order data. It used to be in a custom post type and now they've changed to a custom table. It's their, their high performance order system, the HPOS system that now has... It's been released and it's happening for all new WooCommerce installations by default now, um, which kind of breaks things for ACF really at the moment. If you are trying to put custom field, create custom fields with ACF and change the location of those custom fields to apply to the order screen, you might, yeah, I mean, there, there are people doing it, but it's hard to, to find a really easy example, but you're, you know, you're enriching the data against a WooCommerce order, maybe after, obviously after the order has been created. Um, and that is broken at the moment. So we are trying to track how to, how to deal with that. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a seismic change in the way that WooCommerce is the underlying data storage and, and the code that goes with that. And we're having to, to think about the best way to support it. Um, but yeah. No one's no one's piped up yet, so I presume that's not affecting the group right now. Well, we are doing for time. We've got ten minutes left. Any other questions? If you've got a burning question and you don't want to type, feel free to unmute. So I think we could probably we could probably start to wrap it up. I think as we said earlier in earlier in the session, there's not many of these left. The actual next one before the end of the year is December the eighth. Um, so we'll we'll probably either send an email about that. Um, if you're not subscribed to the newsletter, please do that. You can do that from. Let me just get the links. You can do that from the bottom of the uh, advanced custom fields website homepage or in the footer. Uh, and we will we'll shoot an email about that. I think it will just be potentially a general q and A. I don't know if we'll have anybody back on or on to talk about anything. Um, but if you've got suggestions about if you came to the last time session, which was Jason Barl from WP Engine, who talked about WP GraphQL, which is kind of a different way of doing um, sites with data that you need to get out, maybe headless sites. It's an alternative to the REST API. Um, if you caught his session, we do do topics or special guests, different plugins, people come in. So if you've got any suggestion, something that you want to, uh, you'd, you'd want to see us talk about from an ACF related uh, stance. We had a somebody a couple of sessions ago talk about how 
uh, generate press and acf work well together and generate press is a really popular way of creating websites and um, we are uh, we spoke to the generate press guys and they hopefully will come on um chat fridays uh, in the new year so if you've got like another thing like that if you really want to talk about how elementor works or or the tool that you're using with acf and you want us to try and do a kind of a, a crossover show just please yeah drop us a drop us a message or drop us a um a tweet and we'll we'll try and make it happen all righty well i think yeah let's give everyone some time back on friday morning afternoon whatever time um thanks for coming as usual and we will see you on the 8th of december um yeah thanks again and have a lovely weekend see ya thanks everyone thanks, bye